Welcome to the last video in section 7.2 on spans. We're in the middle of example 7.2.6, but before we continue that, we're going to go through the remark that is at the top of the page. And this remark says, if spans are just points, lines, and planes, etc., why are we bothering to study them? We're already familiar with these geometric objects from our study of them in R3. Spans, however, are defined in terms of linear combinations. Those operations that create linear combinations are scalar multiplication and vector addition. These are defined in Rn for all n. Reinterpreting our familiar geometries in terms of spans, then, lets us work with geometric objects in unfamiliar higher dimensions. The previous method, the geometric method, depended on the cross product and so worked only in R3. The next method, the algebraic method that we're about to do, will work in any dimension. So let's go back and look at example 7.2.6 and we were asked if we had vectors v1 and v2 and v3 to describe the span of these vectors geometrically by giving it an equation for the geometric object that represents the span. So we're going to start this in a little bit of a different way than we did in the previous method. We're going to let w be an arbitrary vector in R3, so x, y, and z be some vector in R3, and we are going to find a condition. In this example it will be one condition, but it might be more, so I'll put or conditions, because that might be the case in other examples that you do. Find a condition on x, y, and z so that w will be part of the span of these vectors v1, v2, and v3. Well, we know that w is in the span of a collection of generating vectors if and only if w can be expressed as a linear combination of the generators v1, v2, and v3, which means that w is a1, v1, plus a2, v2, plus a3, v3. This vector equation must be consistent. Well, this vector equation, we know, if we write in the components of each of these vectors, we can transform this vector equation into an equivalent linear system. So a2 times v2 plus a3 times v3. So this vector equation is consistent if and only if the equivalent linear system is also consistent. So 2a1 minus a2 plus 5, a3 is x, minus a1 plus a2 minus a3 is y, and 3a1 minus a2 plus 9a3 is z. This must also be consistent. But we know how to determine the consistency of a linear system. We can put it into an augmented matrix, reduce that matrix to one of its echelon forms, and examine the form for consistency of the linear system. So after many steps, we would get to an echelon form that I prepared for us, which would look like this. And so our matrix, our linear system, will be consistent if and only if there are no inconsistencies. So if we look at this bottom row, right, we have a rank of 2 already guaranteed in the augmented matrix. We have to make sure that there are no inconsistencies, which means that 2x plus y minus z had better be zero. 
to give us a consistent linear system, which is what we need for w to be in the span. Now you might recognize this. This was the plane that we got in the previous video using the geometric method, which is what a v1, v2, v3, w, which is the vector x, y, z. If and only if the components of W satisfy 2x plus y minus z equals 0, which is a plane through the origin. Therefore, we may interpret the span of v1, v2, v3 may be interpreted geometrically. as a plane through the origin in three-dimensional space. The next video will move on to section 7.3, which will study the dependence and linear, in, linear dependence and independence of vectors, which will refer back again to spans.